uh, the first speaker is Stefan Lorenz, forgive me, Sernier, I hope. Uh, and he will be speaking about, uh, oh my, I've lost it. There it is. A democratic use of our digital data. Thanks Here we go. A lot. Thanks a lot for the, for the preview. It, it's Sorgner, Sorgner, just so, how to pronounce it. Doesn't matter. Okay. All fine. Um, yeah. I didn't realize you were actually an American. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else showed that when choosing between health and privacy, we should go for freedom or why Harari is wrong? Harari claims in his opinion piece, The World After the Coronavirus from 2020. I quote, asking people to choose between privacy and health is in fact the very root of the problem because this is a false choice. We can and should enjoy both privacy and health. We can choose to protect our health and stop the coronavirus epidemic, not by instituting totalitarian surveillance regimes, but rather by empowering citizens, unquote. But Harari is wrong. To promote health effectively, large amounts of data are needed. The more data we can use, the more reliable are the resulting correlations of health and our behavior, genes and external influences, and many other things. Such data are also needed for innovation, scientific research, and policy making. All these procedures are of central importance for our country. Extensive amounts of data are needed for the econ economic, health, and social prosperity of a country. However, it must be ensured that the data are used democratically. Such a structure does not yet exist at present. In the USA, data are primarily collected by large companies, and this turns them into quasi-political actors, which has the potential to undermine the foundations of free democratic societies. In China, data are collected by the government on the basis of values and norms that cannot be reconciled with the achievements of the Enlightenment. The structures currently prevailing in Europe undermine our strongest interests. And here, the focus is on data protection. The possibility of achieving an extensive collection of digital data at political level as well is being practically undermined. However, this also means that we are losing the opportunity to use the data for democratic interests and to promote our health. Collecting data is particularly important when it comes to the issue of health. If we have to choose between health and privacy, we should choose health because the majority of citizens identify an increased health span with a better quality of life. We have no reasons for being sad about giving up on privacy. We should not cherish privacy, but we should cherish freedom. We can, help and we can have health and freedom but not health and privacy. Why do we think we need privacy? There are two main theories that explain this, the property theory and the sanction theory, and they are not mutually exclusive. According to the property theory, data are an intellectual property and therefore an extension of ourselves. So we mix ourselves with something external and thus we gain uh, intellectual property rights. If governments or anybody else takes away our data, they seem to expropriate it. But is this necessarily the case? If data are our property that we can exchange for other goods in our favor, such as our health insurance, then this is not an expropriation. Having a universal health insurance is an enormously important achievement, but keeping the system alive demands huge financial inflows. Using our data to partially compensate for this service is in the interest of the society. Furthermore, the sanction theory states that we fear that the data being collected, stored, and used by a government should be the grounding for sanctions against it. We fear sanctions. However, sanctions are necessary. If a murder of an innocent child gets caught and sanctioned, this is just and widely accepted by the society. We merely don't wish to be sanctioned for acts which should not be sanctioned, neither morally, institutionally, nor legally. And this is the crucial issue. The fear of such sanctions is also the reason why we fear our personal data being stored at one place. But how can these fears be dispelled? First, we need to reduce the possibility of access to the data by humans because the risk of abuse is too high. Data access should primarily be granted to algorithms. Only in specialized circumstances, humans should have the right to access the data. And this is a significant challenge which permanently needs to be dealt with conclusively. Second, we need to become much more open and pluralistic. Only acts ought to be punished where direct harm is being done to another person. Currently, this is far from being the case in many parts of the world, even the most developed countries. 
third, in, uh, third, we should promote e-government to make decision-making processes concerning our data more transparent. A lot more would have to be said on this issue from the need to establish a well-functioning fast operating infrastructure to the need to realize reliable algorithms to reduce the need for human intervention. The regulation I suggest has the advantage that the digital data are also being used to at least partially pay for the universal health care, which is an, an enormous achievement. It takes seriously the relevance of data collection for innovation, scientific research, and policy making. It's in the interest of the people as well as of a government to be able to collect and use digital data to guarantee that an enormous plurality of different lifestyles can be embraced in a society while a highly efficient universal healthcare system is available. We need a democratic usage of our digital data. And this approach seems a promising initial step for developing appropriate social, legal, and political structures for realizing a proper democratic usage of our digital data. If a government stores all digital data and uses them, then it can be argued that expropriation occurs which would be an illegitimate harm being done to persons. However, this needs to be rethought. It would not be an expropriation of our digital data, of our intellectual property, if the data were used in a democratic manner and were used to, so that it, um, it helps to finance our interest. And here's the issue of health content. The majority of citizens identify an increased health span with a higher quality of life. And this matters politically. And this is the reason why universal public health insurance is politically justified. Yet the costs for upholding such a system are enormous. It's relevant as enormous too. So even in Europe, the differences concerning the quality of universal public healthcare systems are enormous. Healthcare is incredibly expensive, yet it's in our interest. If the digital data were used to at least partially cover the costs of a universal public health insurance, it would not be an expropriation, but rather the payment for a service which is widely requested. Most people identify an increased health span with an increased quality of life. As having a health insurance is, is a widely shared human interest, it's a duty of the government to provide people with it. Developing a new drug is risky and costs a lot of money. If a pharmaceutical company has successfully developed a new drug and has patented the invention, they've got the exclusive right for 20 years to realize a financial gain out of their patent. They can charge whatever amount of money they want for the drug developed. And this makes sense as they took the risk and financial burden to develop the drug in the first place. However, data are needed for developing new drugs. And where do they get the data from? In a political regime with a total surveillance, data, digital surveillance system, the government stores and projects um, the available per personalized data. And they can pass depersonalized versions of the data onto others, for example, drug companies. And in this way, certain limitations can be imposed on the developing company. The pharmaceutical company can no longer charge whatever is in their interest as the drug was developed on the basis of data provided by the people. The data were made accessible on the basis of a contract with the government which limits the right of the drug company. And in this way, it can be guaranteed that newly developed drugs can be made available to the people on a financially more accessible basis or in a way that it can be included in the universal health insurance. So hence storing and using the data by the government is not or doesn't have to be an expropriation by it, but it can be a payment. And in, in these circumstances, it would be a payment. We support the payment of a universal health insurance by means of our personalized data. And this is what I mean by democratizing the use of collecting data. Nevertheless, it can be objected that even though I permanently stress the relevance of the norm of negative freedom, as I do in many of my writings, and the, and the need to promote plurality further, does my claim that all, we all need to embrace total surveillance or um, collection of digital data and not undermine the relevance of freedom? It's clear that it does. No society can have absolute freedom. Sanctions for certain behavior are necessary. If someone kills an innocent person, the murderer needs to be punished. Can a certain type of bodily harm become legally obligatory? Vaccinations are the best example. Still, one can wonder whether it wouldn't be more in tune with the normal freedom as a dropping out option existed. That means if it was possible not to be forced to pay for the universal health insurance by means of, of the collection of digital data. So if citizens prefer to pay for the universal health insurance with money rather than with personalized data, should a social liberal democratic society not offer their citizens this option? Negative freedom is a wonderful achievement. Maybe this option should be available. 
However, what would be the consequences? How much would it cost to pay for the universal health insurance with money rather than with personalization? If it doesn't cost much, then many citizens might choose this option, which would undermine the goal of collecting the data in the first place, and the dropping out option would get more expensive. In this case, only very few rich citizens could afford it. Does it not undermine freedom too? If the power difference between the rich and the poor gets too big, then the economically weaker ones are under an illegitimate pressure. Hence, freedom undermines itself if one provided citizens with a dropping out option. So even though it initially seems to be more in tune with negative freedom if a dropping out option was legally provided, given further reflections, it seems more likely that in this case, freedom undermines itself. In any case, further reflections and practical evidence are needed for further judgments on this issue. It was obviously not my intention to develop the fully worked out political system involving algorithmic data processing here. I don't even think any one answer can ever be fully convincing and appropriate for all systems. I merely wish to show that embracing the collection of digital, digital data or total digital surveillance and the loss of privacy which goes along with it can be in tune with the affirmation of the normal freedom and that it's in our interest to implement such structures as this seems to be the most promising way of using digital data in a democratic manner and not in a way that it primarily serves the interests of governments or private companies. In a way, this would be a, a proper democratic usage of, of a data, maybe even a European social credit system, which includes a democratic usage of a data, digital data could be developed in this manner. So I'm very much uh, looking forward to discussing these issues with you further. Many thanks for your time. Thank, thank you, Stefan. So let's see. I guess I have the first question here. Wouldn't it make sense to require anonymization of health data prior to required general release? It, it wouldn't be a general release. It would be sort of whenever it gets released, yes then the data would, um, would have to be um, depersonalized or uh, anonymized, at least uh, depersonalized. One could simply leave me, um, that, would, that would definitely be needed. In any case, um, um, also when the processing already of the data um, should be primarily done, sort of once it's collected by a government, the data processing should be done primarily by algorithms. But because once, I mean, any human being having access to such data so sort of the risk of, 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 of abuse is indeed enormous, sort of just blackmailing some people with having some, or using them in some way in, in one's own interest. And that, I'm, I'm extremely scared of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm aware that this is a major challenge, but um, I don't think uh, the advantages which go along with sort of, which having these data in particular for, for making research concerning increasing the health span, but also then as a consequence then for paying for universal health insurance, the advantages are too big um, and that, that we can basically, uh, we can we, we cannot embrace, not embracing this option is not a pragmatically realistic option. Okay. Well, all right. The next question comes from Martin. Argument that we need to give up our data for financing public health care can be resolved with simpler measures of higher taxes for the companies. Moreover, if the EU states sell data to private companies, the latter get all the data and power that comes with it, the same as in USA model. Can you defend your argument? I'm, I'm, um, so I'm, I'm aware look at, that basically... Okay. I was just going to say, you might want to look at the... Uh, the text to make sure you get the whole question. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Go to chat. You'll see it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is more efficient. That's the main argument, basically. Um, I'm aware. So basically, I'm I'm aware that um, um, companies are more innovative than sort of a public institution. Um, um, I've got a couple of worries which go along, um, which why I think the option which um, sort of the collecting of digital data should should be done by 
uh, should be done by, by democratic, social liberal democratic governments rather than by private companies. So, well, the strongest argument um, in favor of companies, they are more innovative, they're more <laughs> flexible, they can be more adaptive. However, once the data is being collected, then it's in the hand of the companies and it's a, you know, um, information is power and, and power basically in the hands of, of, of companies um, has the implication I have to worry that that could lead to political influence. Um, so basically in that case, the companies become political players. And, um, and I've, in the end, sort of my counter, one of the counter arguments, I have more trust in the data being stored safely if it's being collected by a, by a liberal, social liberal, liberal democratic government than it is being done by a, by a company. Um, and the second argument, it is more efficient if the, if the data are collected by, by a government, you know, like a European Union government coming together, they can legally enforce the regulation so that basically um, all the data have to be collected. Um, in, in this way, it is possible. It is possible to 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 um, you know um, have the data by by everyone involved at least within a certain within a certain um, a, a country within the European Union. So in that case, it would be more efficient. Um, um, in order to get more more of the data, um, in the other case, um, the companies would have to be so good, would have to be so convincing. Um, that, that the people adopt their models in order to get the data and only very small set um, could, could be collected. But um, my main worry is um, that the data is being stored more safely. I basically have much more trust in a liberal social democratic government than I have in, 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 in a company. And, and, and I'm aware that even in liberal social democratic governments, things can go terribly wrong. New leaders can be elected which don't respect don't have the same respect for for or want to use the data in their own in their own personal interest. But this is this is basically we need to fight for that. It's um, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen, um, that the data doesn't is is not being abused. But I can see your point. So now I'm open for a discussion. But I think why why I favored sort of the model I've been presenting I, because is is really the the, tr the lack of trust in companies. I guess that's the end of the questions, but I would like to ask. Um, I know, Walter, 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 there are yeah. people raising their hands like me. Oh, oh uh, I see them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. OK, go ahead, Jose, since you're here. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Stefan, I totally agree. I think that Western democratic uh, uh, liberal countries are more reliable, uh, hopefully, than companies and even more reliable than Eastern totalitarian governments. Uh, so I could put them in that order. However, uh, besides that, also some IT people have said privacy is dead. Get over it. So basically, um, you know, we can sequence your genome just by touching you. I can sequence your genome. So, so I think all this privacy, you know, it's overblown also because uh, anyone can sequence the genome and know everything about you. So what is your take on that? Yeah, I, I I agree, but basically the, the the laws the laws go against the, the laws prohibit us to do so. In in particular with the GDPR and 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 whenever sort of whenever in public circumstances um, in 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 continental Europe um, that's that's a reply you get. We want our privacy to be protected. We cherish the achievement of the GDPR. Um, and um, I, I'm I'm having actually yeah and. Several discussion with with people who Paul Nemitz, for example, who's who's strongly responsible for implementing the GDPR in, in the European Union. Um, but in the end, I I don't find their their arguments very convincing. But they've got the, the they've got the crowding. They've got basically um, the crowding by the European by by the people in, in the various countries, and and that is that is a challenge basically. Um, I I. I Sort of the majority of citizens seem to favor this option um, of, of, of upholding privacy, of not, not having it collected. And it is the, the, the greatest worry of actually implementing an, a more open regulation is, 
that it, it, it definitely goes against the, what, what seems to be the dominant interest in European countries. And I fear that um, we will have to, um, people will only change their minds once they realize the, what it means that information is power. And once the, the money basically is leaving Europe and we will not have, we will not have a quality of lives compared, or we will be much worse off than the United States or Eastern Asian countries. And then, then people will realize what it, what um, information is power means, and what the relevance of digital data is. And once, once, even relatively speaking, you know, the Chinese are better off than than we are. And um, I hope I, I'm trying to convince and make people aware of the incredible importance of having the personalized data collected. But I'm aware there's a strong political hindrance in in Europe. Um, among the citizens for doing so. And yes, so I hope we, we manage to show the relevance and make people aware of that, no? Very well. DDA, could you make it quick? Yes. <clears throat> yes, uh, so uh, you, I have many, many comments, but yeah, like, you know, globally, I agree uh, with you in many points. And by the way, uh, here, I totally also agree with, uh, uh, Jose, um, it's a sad situation that uh, uh, at the moment uh, it is where the data the most needed, where the data is the most needed that we use it uh, the less. In the most democratic country, we use it uh, uh, less than in other countries and so on and so on. Uh, I like a lot uh, what you said about, uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, it has to be in uh, used by, uh, let's say, artificial intelligence and not by humans. So you have more privacy. Uh, that is, that's a great way uh, to say it. Just maybe you can comment a, a little bit about uh, the European health data space. I will comment on it also at the end. But I think it's really going theoretically in the good direction. What is for you not going in the good direction in the European health data space? Oh, if I may, uh, before you before you speak, yeah. Liz, could you get your question in real quick? We don't we're running out of time just so that he can. Yeah, answer I'll, go, I'll go quick. Um, it's more of a comment than a question. So I have definitely pushed for people sharing their health data for years. Uh, we our company definitely are professionals at anonymizing data, but I won't speak for myself. One one area of concern that I have with Stefan's talk, even though I agree with the, the entire premise is that actually business is your translational engine. If you do not share health data with companies, they cannot translate drugs to you. So governments are one level and universities are actually the hub of innovation, not, not businesses. Businesses translate value. Businesses only make money if that value turns into something for you. I would definitely push for the open source of human data to companies. That's your number one best outcome. Um, you know, universities sit on thousands of patents every year that never translate to industry because industry can't get a hold of them. Your data is the most important value to industry. Sorry, I'm having uh, work done on the house. So please, you know, just, just keep that in mind. Make sure that your data is actually going somewhere that will create a better drug for you. I, I couldn't agree more. No, with with that sort of everything you say, uh, Liz. Um, the, the, the issue is sort of um, it's not sufficient if, if <laughs> there's just a couple of individuals sharing the data. Sort of um, to to get this comprehensive set to find out really the specialized correlations. We the more the more data, um, the better it is. And that's why sort of just giving individuals, giving away the data, sharing data doesn't seem to be the sufficient solution. Um, and, and that's why it's sort of, um, sort of a more, more state government uh, regulation for, yeah, for, I agree. for the, for the data. I agree. It has to be at a, at a super large level. And um, I think that it goes back to when people started using the internet and people were afraid of the government or, you know, companies going and looking and seeing what they were looking at. But the, the truth of the matter is mostly it was ubiquitous and health is the same way. We are vastly dying of the same things. We haven't changed it enough to have super outliers. So um, when people consider sharing their data, uh, please, consider that you know you you are 
thus far in human history, not a, a very uh, special case or, or major outlier. Please share your data. So Didier, did you get your question answered adequately? I didn't. And I also didn't notice that Daria has a question here about using the blockchain for storage of data. Yeah, interesting. Uh, did, Didier? I, um, Stefan was not answering yet, I, but I will speak about it uh, later. So let's uh, let's keep it for the others at the moment. Maybe if I, I just want to make a really brief comment, which I thought was quite interesting recently. Uh, um, well, well, anyway, there's a, there's already a war for the digital data taking place in the world. Um, and we can see that with the Chinese firewall and China having the right to collect the data in China and, and, and sort of trying to get with TikTok and, and uh, uh, Alibaba and other companies trying to get it from outside of Huawei, get, getting it from outside of, uh, outside of China. And what I, I, what I find quite an interesting move, and I think this is, might be something worth considering, and I really haven't, haven't heard that, um, is sort of um, what is happening with the move to space with SpaceX basically, and SpaceX having the possibility of launching, they, SpaceX has more than a third of the satellites existing um, in the world. And in the future, basically, they try to provide uh, internet globally. And if they provide the internet globally, that means all the data flows via their satellites. Um, I just thought, I wanted to mention this is in this context, because I think that would have um, I mean, because China has already reacted in so far, well, they see, if they see um, SpaceX as, as a threat to their security, then they would consider shooting down some of the satellites. And I think sort of the move towards space is an extremely important, um, is an extremely important, important move also when it comes to collecting data. Um, because now if, if this is sort of, and in, 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 in SpaceX does, seems to me to be the only company, um, the others do, do space travel, but SpaceX is there to launch satellites and satellites to provide internet and the internet is, means the, uh, the possibility of data collection. And I think that's in, enormously important for taking that into consideration, just as an additional comment. Well, what about the blockchain question? <sighs> Quickly. Quickly. Um, it, it, I've actually I've talked to to Vitaly Buterin a week before he launched he launched Ethereum uh, about the possibility and didn't only want to implement it uh, for 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 um, currency for paying payment purposes and I can see I can I can see the possibilities I I still have worries just concerning the scaling and energy. Uh, 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 the, the, the energy consumption and, and the scalability of blockchain. So these are my worries, which I have as a very short, but uh, uh, as a very short reply. Okay, 